Hydropower is the world's largest source of renewable energy. A technology over 100 years old, but still going strong. Countries across the globe are still harnessing nature's finest gift and putting it to work in lochs, lakes, reservoirs and rivers. From the Three Gorges Dam on China's Yangtze River to Canada's central Robert Barassa, the power of water is a sight to behold. When hydropower was first developed in 1878 in Northumbria, it could only generate enough electricity to power a single lamp. No one could imagine the important role it would still play in the 21st century. A role that, alongside other forms of renewable energy, is ever more important as decarbonisation efforts ramp up. Countries must continue to look for new, or old ways to balance their electricity grids and store power for when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Here in Scotland, this year's COP host country, hydroelectricity has captured imaginations, generated controversy, passion and ultimately pride. Rain is the gift that keeps on giving and in a land rich in natural resources, hydropower is Scotland's original source of renewable electricity. It is one man, Member of Parliament Tom Johnston, the then Secretary of State for Scotland, who is credited with having the vision to harness power from the glens for the people of the glens. A vision that still holds strong today. The hydro schemes were initially thought about in the early 1940s during World War II. There was a very strong desire to bring new life to the Highlands of Scotland. There's a lot of energy in the water that will allow it to turn water turbines. The scale of the work that had to be done was enormous and it required a lot of workforce. Similar to much of the sort of mid-century industry across the United Kingdom at the time, the working conditions were harsh. There was a scant regard for safety. In most cases, the workers were handed a pair of Wellington boots and a soft bonnet and, and that was really all they had to protect them. The fact that hydro schemes are still powering our homes and businesses today, 80 years after they were originally constructed, is testament to the people who built them in the first place. The legacy left by the hydro pioneers is an impressive one. SSE is a proud custodian of many of those assets forged with great hardship to shape a new, brighter future for families, for communities and for Britain. SSE Renewables operates 1,150 megawatts of conventional hydro, involving the management of over 60 power stations, 75 dams and 300 kilometres of tunnels. We also have 300 megawatts of flexible pumped storage with around 900 gigawatt hours of long duration energy storage capability. That's enough to power some 2 million homes each year. Our hydro schemes stretch from the River Shin in the Northern Highlands to Loch Sloy in Argyll and Butte. Thanks to the ingenuity of those early hydro designers and engineers, they not only blend in with Scotland's world-renowned natural scenery, but often enhance the dramatic landscapes in which they sit. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Sloy is not only one of the oldest hydro power stations, but the largest conventional hydro power station in the UK at 152.5 megawatts. Meanwhile, Stronuic is one of the smallest at just 210 kilowatts. But whatever their size or shape, big or small, overground or underground, they all have a role to play.
Conventional hydro takes water from the higher reservoirs and flows down through a series of locks, reservoirs, tunnels and power stations. Our hydro cascades are they're a very important part of our system of power generation here in Scotland. The Tunnel Valley scheme is nine power stations from top to bottom. Tunnel's critical to the Tunnel Valley Cascade. Tunnel power stations are 34 megawatt power station. It has two 17 megawatt machines. At full load, it will move 90 cubic meters of water per second, which would fill an Olympic sized swimming pool in about 27 seconds. At full output, Tunnel power station produces enough power to, to supply approximately 20,000 homes. It sits right in the middle of Cascade and it moves a significant amount of water. Without Tummel, we would constrain four power stations upstream and also potentially not provide enough water to the power stations downstream. So Tummel's absolutely key within the Cascade. Pump storage has the capability to pump that water back up into the higher reservoir again. In periods of excess generation or excess supply on the market, we're able to effectively use pumps to push water up to an upper lock, which is then ready to generate at peak times later. Pump storage hydro power stations are incredibly flexible and FORS in particular is really flexible. FORS is one of only four pumped hydro stations in the UK. FORS consists of two 150 megawatt turbines or a combined total of 300 megawatts. That's enough to power 650,000 homes. Hydro technology provides essential flexibility to support the net zero transition of electricity systems both here in Scotland, the UK and the wider world. Just as hydro had a transformational impact on living standards in the post-war period, so too can it have an equally significant role in shaping the net zero world which the climate emergency demands. The transition to net zero comes with many challenges, but how we decarbonise our energy systems, replacing fossil fuel with renewable generation while also keeping the lights on, is one of our biggest challenges. We know that wind and solar power are capable of supplying most of our energy needs, but we also know that the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. Our ability to store this power when we generate an excess will be key to keeping our lights on and our phones charged as we make the transition to net zero. When most people think of storing energy, they think of batteries. Large, modern batteries will play an important role, whether it's in electric cars or soaking up some of the excess power from wind farms. But batteries only provide storage for specific needs or for short periods of time. What happens when we have calm conditions over a number of days or even weeks? This is when hydro comes into its own, storing the power contained in water for when we need it most. Right now the energy markets are going through a massive transition as part of our journey to net zero. The UK has a bunch of different flexible assets. Some of those are gas plants, some of them are some of our hydro plants. Some of that store is actually being coal. That's clearly part of history now. There's not much coal on the system and we're moving to a cleaner energy grid. Hydro actually provides the same storage. If you think about the water that's held in locks and the water that's held in some of our rivers, as we move that water through the systems, we create energy. But actually the choice of when we move that water is down to us. The flexibility and response of those units are very important and increasingly hydro will play a really important part in the mix. What's clear is hydropower will play a valuable role in supporting a decarbonised electricity grid. But even then, hydro faces its own challenges from a changing climate and an ever-aging set of assets. Hydro schemes here in Britain were designed to make use of one of our most abundant natural resources, water, while also minimising the impact on the natural environment. Those early hydro pioneers understood the importance of protecting ecosystems too, 
and protected the migration routes of the iconic North Atlantic salmon. Whether it's Scotland, Canada or Norway, this balance between managing water flows and protecting the natural environment while generating electricity has always been at the heart of hydroelectric power generation. But the ability to predict Scotland's ever-changing weather is being made even harder by climate change. We're in the climate crisis now. Climate change will mean that we have to operate our assets in a different way. Some of them are as old as 1890. In order to secure that capability that they have to deliver on those net zero obligations, we require continued attention and investment. We have a pump storage and development prospect called Curry Glass. It can respond to supply changes and provide peak generation when required. This is 30 gigawatt hours of storage that can power 3 million homes over 24 hours. These sort of assets already exist within the UK. They're vital to the UK as things stand. As the energy system moves forward, they're going to become even more crucial. The scenic beauty. The Art Deco power stations the feats of engineering behind those momentous dams holding back an almighty power. Hydroelectric energy truly is a culmination of the fortitude, determination and courage of humankind. That's as true now as it was in Tom Johnson's days. Those qualities will be needed in huge measures as we tackle the climate emergency. In Great Britain and around the world, Hydroelectric generation will be a powerful agency for the economic and social rehabilitation of vast areas and scattered populations. Not to mention a powerful agency for net zero.